One of my favorite parts of biology is observing how good organisms are at existing. Our planet has a huge range of environments and organisms have evolved to not just live but thrive in almost all of them. From thermophilic bacteria that live in hot springs to insects that camouflage into their environments to leaves that tilt and move with the sun throughout the day to absorb the most sunlight, evolution has led to some amazing things. Every blade of grass, every ant, every fish in the sea is the product of selection and adaptation and change. And then you look at a platypus and you're like, go home evolution, you're drunk. But for the most part, nature is awe-inspiring and often very smart, and we humans look to it to solve some of our own problems. This is called biomimicry, when we begin to model our own creations after nature. A great example of biomimicry is solar panels shaped after leaves. When we first designed solar panels, we designed giant bulky squares, but that might not be the most efficient answer. Researchers at Princeton last year, in trying to make solar panels more efficient, looked at how nature collects light with leaves. They designed solar panels that mimicked the folds and wrinkles found in leaves and found them to be 47% more efficient. But we don't always get it quite right, and a great example of this are swimsuits that were designed to mimic shark skin. Now, shark skin is covered in what are called dermal denticles. They're actually modified teeth that act like scales and cover the shark's skin, making them more hydrodynamic. Companies designed swimsuits mimicking these dermal denticles, and they actually caused so much of a fuss that they were banned from the Olympics. But further studies showed that the swimsuits actually didn't reduce the swimmer's drag. We'd done a good job copying the texture of the shark, but we had left out the shark's flexibility, and it turns out that this flexibility is key to harnessing the hydrodynamic power of the dermal denticles. Because the humans couldn't move quite like the sharks, they couldn't reduce the drag in the same way. So there, we didn't get shark skin quite right. But another company has found that shark skin's pattern actually deters bacteria from holding on. And they have begun to model this pattern into surfaces, in the hopes of making bacteria-free surfaces that could be used in hospitals. And a super common example of biomimicry? Velcro. In 1941, Swiss engineer George de Mistral went for a walk in the woods. And the story is a little different depending on which bit of science lore you listen to. But he came back from his walk, either with or without his dog, and they were covered in these sticky little burrs. And as he was pulling them out of his clothing and his dog's fur, he decided to take a slightly closer look at them. And he noticed that on the ends of all of the needles of these little burrs, there were little hooks. And this idea of these hooks on the needles led him to invent Velcro. Biomimicry has been used everywhere, from city planning to architecture to medical devices. We've looked at woodpecker heads to find better shock absorption systems, we've looked at butterfly wings to find better chemical sensors, and we've even looked at shellfish fibers to find better underwater adhesives. And now, I turn it over to you. I'm giving you guys homework this week and it comes in two parts. Step one is to come up with a problem or a question. And this can be anything. Maybe you want to design a better shoe, or maybe you want to design a better circuit board, or maybe you want to design a better spoon. And part two is to look to nature to find a way to solve this problem or to answer this question. So if you're trying to design a better shoe, maybe you want to start by looking at animal paws. Or if you're looking into circuit boards, maybe you want to start looking towards veins, either in leaves or in people. Or if you're trying to design a better spoon, maybe you could look towards animal tongues. If you've ever watched a dog drink water, they have to get the water in there and they do it with an interesting lapping motion. And so that could be an interesting way to move water places. So come up with a problem, come up with a solution, and leave it in the comments below. You guys have been having some really interesting science discussions down there in the past couple of videos, and so I want that to happen more. And maybe if you guys come up with some cool stuff, maybe it'll show up in a future video. Um, so I want to know what you guys come up with. Uh, so leave it below, and as always, go forth and do science. Now you didn't really think I was going to give you homework without doing it myself, did you? No. So my question is how can we create light sources in areas that don't have electricity? And so one interesting creative way that I thought you might be able to do it is using bioluminescence. And so a lot of animals are bioluminescent uh, because they use luciferin and luciferase compounds and it's a chemical reaction. And I don't know a ton about that stuff. But I think it would be really cool to investigate how one might be able to make a light source out of bioluminescent compounds um, that you could take camping or that you could use in an area that doesn't have electricity. Just a thought.